miss a shot seem like it's just Christmas. What's the secret to not missing a shot? Um, with me, just um, kind of like I, like I said on the radio, which is like my philosophy for sure is just being consistent, having a mindset of just going to finish everything, no matter if there's somebody in front of you or if there isn't somebody in front of you. At the end of the day, either dunking it or putting it in the rim. <laughs> now you got the NBA record. Are you, are you surprised by that? Though? Uh, yeah, but at the same time, I want I just want to keep moving forward. You know. Like, I, I tell people any accolade that is around my name is a good thing for me. But at the end of the day, I just want to win. Just compete. Just go out and just have fun with the game. Do you usually even make 28 in a row, like, in practice? Or, you know, like... Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. No. <laughs> shots, yeah, like, pretty much, yeah. Um, but, you know, just coming out and doing my job, that's number one main thing that I always kind of, like, have in the back of my head, for sure. When did you notice the, the streak? Um, last game. They told me about it. I was like, oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> then um, they kind of made it. Uh, they kind of. I was just like seeing everything that people were either tagging me in or people were telling me about. Just like in person, I was like, "Oh, that's what's up. Pretty cool." Any added joy being against a former team, extending it? Say again. Any added joy having this kind of like game um, against a former team? A little bit, yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, I love those guys over there. You know, uh, this was my first stop whenever I got here, and they treated me like you know family. So. And never want to uh, make it seem like I enjoy beating them, but I do enjoy beating them, too. <laughs> you did not, probably didn't know Derek Lively very well, or maybe even at all before you came here. Why is it that you two seem to uh, be teaming so seamlessly? I can't understand you're not in the game together, mm -hmm. but you do seem to be piggybacking off each other. I say we both have similar roles, so we have something to, I would say, relate to. At the end of the day, we got a lot in common when it comes to just like the basketball stuff. We set screens and roll to the basket, block shots and grab the rebounds, you know. So it's just we both are the energy guy, anchor of the defense and just come in and just do our job. And he's young. So once he gets fully just like acclimated to the league, he's going to sprout real good, most definitely. Hey, Daniel, I'm sure you've spoken about this to the Dallas writers, but for those of us who covered you here in Chicago, what did that trade mean to you when you moved from Washington to Dallas? Did you see it being this seamless of a fit? Um, I mean, I, it's just like I was already part of the mold. So it was like, in all honesty, just when I got traded from Chicago, it was like a one door closed and another door open for me. So it was another opportunity that I didn't want to, like, you know, not take advantage of at the end of the day. I feel, I feel that I've come here and I've locked into everything that I needed to lock into most how, of. How would you stop a Luka pick and roll? Um, just pray at the end of the day, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much how it was every time that I played against him. Now playing with him, it's just like, man, I see how I see, like, why it was so hard to kind of stop just like most of the stuff that we tried to throw at him on a night to night basis. So it's always good to just be on the other side of that, too. <laughs> What's that like for, for you? And, and you can speak for a lot if you want to, both you guys to be so effective out there. Uh, I mean, it means a lot because at the end of the day, if it's a team that, you know, doesn't really have great rotation or if it's a team that doesn't really have just great paint defense. I mean, we're going to live in the paint. You know, we're two big guys. We're two big targets, too. And Luca and Kyrie, all the other guys on the team, they're going to find us at the end of the day, too. And we just make plays off of us. And it's a good day for everybody, I would say. What, did, what would you say to the fans who probably was disappointed that Luca didn't get another 30 point triple though, but he did get another triple double? I mean, it, it, it'll come again sooner or later, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, I think they, I think we tried to get him maybe a couple, I think, at the end of the game, but didn't fall down. It's all good, though, because I'm pretty sure the next game you may have it again. You never know. <laughs> you mentioned it a little bit, reflecting on your time in Chicago, but just how did you view your experience in Chicago? I know it wasn't a long time or anything, but you feel like you made the most of it, anything you didn't do, or just how do you look back on that? I feel like in all honesty, just like where my work ethic is now, most definitely could have been literally like a lot better in just like the area that um, when I was here, in all honesty, you know, I uh, felt like I took a lot of stuff for granted when I was here. You know, I felt like I didn't get the job done whenever I stepped out on the floor. I felt like I was always fidgety. I felt like I was always not ready, not locked in. So just taking that next step once I got traded, it was something that I wanted to get better at for sure. So it helped me build my character, helped me build my mentality, just come out every night and always be ready for sure. Talking about like your focus on the game, kind of. Yeah, day. yeah. I was. It's like I kind of fell in, fell out of love with the game, and I had to kind of like reevaluate myself. So once I got traded to Washington, it's like I took a step back and just kind of like figured out how to bring myself back into loving the game for sure. You know, it was a lot when it came to just me ment mentally here in Chicago. I wanted to be better than what I was, of course. But you know, it's this with this business. You know, you just have to. I would say 
just be ready for anything, in all honesty. And when I was here for the year and a half that I was here, I felt like I just wasn't in that position when I, when it comes to just being ready for anything, I would say. Was that because of the losing? Hmm? Was that because of the losing? I don't think it was necessarily because of the losing. In all honesty, I think it was just me just wanting to be the player that I wanted to be, and I wasn't making any step to be that player. So I had to do a lot of reevaluations. I had to do a lot of soul searching, too. It was just a lot of stuff that kind of like I would say pulled me out mentally with it. I wanted to be way better than what I was playing, and it's just like I couldn't really just make that push because of just like, you know, I would say I was being lazy for sure. So I had to take another, I would say, step into just like the responsibility of just like being a better player, being a better player off the court, on the court, taking care of my body, taking care of my mental. It's just like a lot of stuff that I had to take the next step into being better at, for sure. With Lively, you, you talked about how young he is. Obviously, he's, <laughs> he's the rookie, you're the vet. But, you know, at the same time, you guys talk about how he, how he handles himself, how yeah. mature he is. I'm curious, like when you first got here, when you're getting – uh, you know, adjusted to the team and the schemes. Mm -hmm. uh, even though, even though you know, you're the vet, he's the rookie. I'm wondering, you know, was he able to help you at all? Oh yeah, you know, sure. just figure things out. Yeah, I mean, like as soon as he, as soon as I got to, I think the first game we played OKC, he was just kind of like giving me pointers and stuff to play on how to play with Luca and whatnot. Which I mean, I already knew, but like it's always great to just see somebody as young as him already just kind of like know the flow of the game and see how he's like really getting accustomed to just like the NBA lifestyle. It's great to see when young guys do that. Yeah, him being able to do that is why he's been so mm -hmm. successful this season. Yeah, true. Does Luke ever surprise you over the past, like in practice or in the game, like that you were expecting that, that time? No, not really. The, the one year, ready? yeah, the one year that I played with Russ, it kind of got me ready for it. Just kind of like, you know, <laughs> just um, being just accustomed to just being in the right spot at the right time. So just being ready. They always tell me to be ready for the late passes. They always tell me to be ready for the early passes, too. So at the end of the day, I just got to have my hands ready, have my hands up, just be ready to finish it around the basket. Take us through that uh, possession where the, the, rookie, the Bulls rookie, Julian Phillips, tried to, tried to dunk on you. I know, I know you have blocked a lot of shots in your yep. career, but take us I mean, through that possession. Just like with offense, defensively being in the right spot at the right time, communicating, telling guys I got the back end, telling them that I'm the low man, and just protecting the house. And the it's a lot of guys that, you know, I've have dunked on me, tried to dunk on me, or, you know, so on and so forth. I just do my job. At the end of the day, it's basketball. If I get dunked on, I charge it to the game. If I block it, I celebrate. <laughs> you celebrate there. Yeah. <laughs> All good. Yeah, cool. Thanks a lot, Sam. Mm -hmm.